This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. So it is my great pleasure to introduce a good friend and colleague, Professor Dr. Um, Bernard Weiser, who is the director of the Munz Cabinet, the coin cabinet in Berlin at the Bode Museum there. So one of the major coin collections worldwide. Um, uh, Bernard has been at the cabinet for ooh, decades at this point, um, has been involved in all sorts of projects, um, including uh, a lot of publications, dozens of books and um, articles and so forth related to uh, his initial specialization, which is ancient coinage, um, and more recently has ventured into uh, medallic art. And again, this is uh, interest that he and I both share. And so we've had good number of conversations over the years uh, related to medallic art particularly, as well as other things. So um, today, however, he's um, going to be talking to us about forgeries, particularly those that were produced by uh, Becker. Um, and I'm sure that uh, some of you already know about Becker's famous forgeries, but those of you who don't, um, and those of you who do, I'm sure we'll be learning a great deal more about this today. So Bernard, it's all yours. I was re remember um, to, to have been visiting scholar at the American Numismatic Society uh, in 2007. And I was remembering normally at a fri Friday at one o'clock, we would have um, come back from an excellent lunch together with Rick Wichonke. We would have drunk some glasses of wine and the students and and also I were in a very friendly and um, good mood. So uh, and the, the poor students had to to live with my all uh, awful English. So I will give it to you. I I didn't uh, I um, decided to speak free, which is even worse. But on the other hand, um, you cannot. You, you, you can get my English like it is. Um, what I try to do is something like a, a discussion is a part of a discussion. And I would like to discuss with you later on um, why to collect uh, forgeries um, in a museum. And, and I also would like to ask you if you are collecting forgeries on your own. Um, the example I would like to talk about is Carl Wilhelm Becker, but I would like to do it more, more general too. In May, we had a meeting of the so-named um, Numismatische Kommission der Länder. It's an institution where every of these 17 countries is represented by one or two um, numismatists. And also there are some experts um, in it, which are standing for some um, abil abilities like historic coin cabinets or like Ulrike Peter is talking for the academies or, or um, Mr. Zikaus for Katie Coins and so on. And we um, we give us a subject every year and the subject for 2023-2024 is uh, forgeries, for, false money and uh, forgeries. When we're talking about um, Falschmünzen in Germany, um, uh, we, we always start with Herodot and his story about Polycrates, which lived in the 6th century. And um, Herodot on himself is a little bit skeptical, but he says, yes, uh, um, there was a situation to bring the Spartans away, which were um, trying to, to um, fight against him, and uh, Herodot uh, says Polycrates uh, would have made coins from lead and um, uh, gilded them 
and they would have uh, be betrayed by this and would have gone away. And uh, we have a long discussion about this coins at some try and do's to identify coins like this. And uh, when we are talking about false coins, there's another sentence, um, a sentence which seems to be really true. Um, that that uh, is said, um, the um, false coins are not as old as um, the genuine coins, but they are just they came just five minutes later. And uh, to, to thinking about um, this game or this fight between uh, the, the forgers who make, make forgeries and, um, and the uh, mints fighting against it, um, it's a permanent uh, process. Um, so, um, and one of the last inventions in this area where this uh, so named polymer coin in Germany, which was invented in 2016. There, is, um, there are th um, two materials, it's connected, and in the middle of it, it's a polymer um, ring which has different colors. And you can bring other security um, elements in it. And it was an idea um, to, to establish a five euro coin in the um, European Union. Um, they were not successful until now, but uh, in Germany, we use it for um, commemorative coins in the moment. When we are talking about forgeries, every collector, every, every numismatist is interested in and has something to say about it, um, but it's not always um, clear what they mean. So we have this um, money, false money, which is in the currency. We have something from the Renaissance which is something special. And we have uh, the coins which were made uh, to betray the collectors. And when I'm talking about collectors, I mean also the museums. So this currency money is, um, is, is uh, sometimes um, not, not, not clear to decide is it made uh, in, in a time of urgency? Uh, what is the meaning of it? It's, it's easy to, um, to, to identify. They are, uh, for example, when they are subarat, so they have a nucleus, which is from S, or they are, they are subferat, which is from a ferrum. And um, in the database of the coin cabinet, they are identified by this by these elements, and you can you can um, find them easily if you are looking for. Uh, also, in, another name for this in German is gefüttert um, coins, which has a silver uh, surface um, or uh, is uh, a hout about it, and in the middle there is something like case of heaven. And then we have this phenomenon of the Renaissance, imitations, inventions, like for example, I show, show here only one example from uh, Giovanni Cavino, this guy is Julius Caesar, Vini Vidi Vicky. I found this also as a genuine coin in the uh, history in the Latin book of my son, uh, which was funny um, because uh, the picture um, uh, redacteur of this book uh, was looking for Caesar. He found it and he illustrated it and it seemed, uh, seemed for him to be um, convincing uh, 
to find such a coin, which is uh, exactly not a coin, and it's uh, just an invention. Um, the the um, obverse of this uh, metal is um, is very near to to a real um, a Roman denarius as this picture, but it's a metal and it's it, it's something really uh, special. These uh, these elements um, and the idea of imitation. So uh, the the um, Renaissance um, medalists were very proud. To, to be able to work in a meta, um, they, they thought it's, it's the same behavior, uh, like to make uh, coins um, or medallions in the Roman times. So what we are talking about today is the, um, the coins which were made to um, betray the collectors. Um, and um, so, and it's always clear that the other two groups have uh, connections um, to this betraying. For example, if you um, if there are uh, gold coins um, from from the um, which which is made as forgery, and the gold coins are made for collectors. Then there are also uh, forgeries to to um, uh, to betray the collectors, and the same with the Renaissance um, medals. There was also in the Renaissance a discussion how authentic uh, the pieces should be, and and uh, if if it's uh, legitim. To, to make imitations like the imitation of Cavino. There, for example, Enea Vico was such a guy who was uh, dis discussing the question of, of authenticity very, very hard. When we look um, to, to forgeries from the perspective of a public collection, we have a lot of actors. We interact. We interact with them. For example, in Germany, is the Deutsche Bundesbank responsible for the um, forgeries which are coming to the market? We have, um, and Peter will will, will tell knows this too. Uh, we have um, always talking with the um, coin dealers, uh, discussing um, forgeries with them. In Germany, we have also the system that there are um, experts in numismatics, which are um, vereidigt. Um, they they um, can, uh, can give um, their expertise. And uh, for example, if there is a um, a, a law thing, or there, there is something, um, it's, it's about heritage or so. Then we have the collectors. We are talking with about forgeries. We have networks. One of the um, prominent networks uh, you, you uh, should, uh, could know is the forgery network, which is existing since 2005. And um, since some years, um, there is a, a Bulgarian um, initiative about ancient coins counterfeits scientific network. We had a meeting about this uh, in this year in Sofia. We have the uh, scientific, um, uh, the, the um, Naturwissenschaftler, um, which, which making um, analysis on some ways we have often to do with uh, customs or police or lawyers about this. And we have also um, portals like Corpus Numorum, which is also interested in um, forgeries to, to make the um, difference to the genuine coins and genuine 
types. And at the end, we have also uh, the universities in the board, for example, when we make uh, teaching students uh, how to um, describe coins and, uh, and, and also an aspect uh, from coin forgeries I will talk um, about later on. If you look the other perspective of the forger, they have the same people they are dealing with. They are also interested what the mints are doing. Uh, I will talk about this. And there um, are stories, and I, I, I never had, um, uh, had, had, had made this experience, but um, there are stories about forgers which are coming to the uh, museums and show coins and ask, um, are, they, are they forgeries? And then when the curator says, yes, it's a forgery, they ask, yeah, why, why do you think so? And then they come four weeks uh, later again and bring new coins and ask again. And so um, this seems to be happening. And the, the forger want to interact they, they want to bring uh, their their forgeries to the market and and so so it's just and and we could could take every every um, person um, every group uh, to to look um, from this role and sometimes they are they, they are mixed the, the interests are mixed um, the coin dealers have um, um, the coin dealers, um, which in Germany are part of groups like the um, uh, Deutsche Münzenhändlerverband, they uh, say from themselves, they have to show some expertise. This means that they have a library and uh, every of them has also a collection of forgeries, um, for example, to show the customer um, that it's a, a wrong coin or um, to take uh, objects out of the market. Um, we we um, got in the um, spring of this year, uh, such uh, boxes of Bieber boxes with a um, uh, forgery collection of uh, a coin dealer um, with the name Hans Ulrich Seifert from Köln. Um, and this is more or less typical. The big dealers have very, very um, good um, collections and um, invest also money in um, in holding this kind of collections uh, on the uh, in a good condition. Then I, I talked about this coin uh, forgery network. When I visited it last time, it's there are more than um, ten thousand objects in it, um, and the the last one at that time was also a Becker uh, for, a forgery. Um, there you have to say it, it was made by a person who is not a numismatist, but an um, informatic person. And he did it really in a very good way for the time he made it, 2005. It's really an old, an old thing. Um, this this, um, this um, database is not curated. So, so we have not so many... Um, metadata and things like this, but it's it's uh, uh, big. And it's also a question, what is collected there as forgery? Well, we have here a good, um, good example. Somebody named uh, Rowan put um, this um, coin, which was coming by CNG in it. And um, so, so it's it's really um, a good source. It's also clear that this um, this coin was sold by CNG as Becker uh, forgery. So everything is very fine. 
and um, so so um, this is a good source for forgeries. If we if you um, look if you uh, we we have then started in the numismatic commission to think what should be done with forgeries and um, there for example. Uh, there is a question for the publication of forgeries in public uh, coin collections, uh, a systematic uh, a review of the literature and the um, numismatic research. And very, very fast, it was clear that we need also to um, make a definition what we are interested in. And so, um, we, um, we, we, we said, no, we are mainly interested in forgeries, um, which are dangerous for the collectors and collections. When we come to Carl Wilhelm Becker, um, Fritz Rudolf Künker, you um, know him, I suppose, said to me, oh, it's fine that you are working, want to work about Becker, but we know everything uh, to Carl Wilhelm Becker. And it's uh, it's true, uh, he's a person, there uh, exists already a lot of publications, starting with Domenico Sestini in 1826, who was, uh, it's, uh, who was the first person who wrote about his falsifications without naming um, Carl Wilhelm Becker. Um, and then there were other literature. And in 1926, George Hill wrote a wonderful book where he collected, uh, uh, where, where he has shown um, the dice in form of casts. Um, and, um, published it in a really proper way. Um, but uh, let's see if it's really true that, that we know everything. Um, we have some, some strong data about him. He was born in um, uh, 1772 in, in Speyer uh, as son of a uh, wine um wine dealer um then he uh, and his family were victim of the napoleon um activities they they had to fly uh, to mannheim in 1815 he moved to offenbach and this was his acme it was a time where uh, he was friend by the um, um, Prince of uh, Isenburg, and he was named to uh, Fürstlich Hofrat. So since then, he had this name Hofrat, and um, he was um, uh, he, he 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 was visited in this time. He was also visited by um, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe who's an uh, eminent uh, German um, author, um, very famous. And this time uh, was, was he, he was a very, uh, he, he's uh, find, found in a lot of publications uh, as antiquarian, as owner of ancient things, and also as, as dealer of ancient things. And, um, this, this were until 1820. Uh, uh, um, in 1824, it started that more and more forgeries were connected with him. And then he um, made a wonderful uh, move. He, uh, it's, it's for me, it's a good example for framing. He said, yes, he always made um, dice, and he always and he 
he just wanted to give invitations for collectors and um, and then he tried to sell his um, his dies more than 500 dies um, to um, to uh, first to the emperor in Austria in Vienna and he tried it some over a longer time and at this this moment the um, the the um, dice became more and more prominent. So uh, when Zestini um, wrote his um, his his booklet, um, he had also the list of 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 the um, dice which were made by um, uh, by Becker himself. Yeah. So and and this was also then then there there was the um, curator in Vienna, uh, who was in the beginning a good friend to Becker, and then he also wrote about uh, falsifications, and this was a really hard fight and hard time for Becker, and, um, and at the end he died relatively young in Homburg. This is, this is something we know, and um, but the question is, where are all this, where is all this material we are talking about? And um, the interesting thing is, it was also for me an interesting um, point that there are more things in Berlin uh, than, than I expected in the beginning. We have um, the whole die collection, uh, the, the whole die um, archive of Becker, which are more than 500, um, which were given by the daughter of um, Becker, Elise Becker, uh, first to the Saalburg, which is um, um, the, which is um, in, uh, kind of a museum of a, a, a castell, um, and um, when, when she gave it uh, to this point, the director asked uh, Wilhelm II, the German emperor, what to do with this dice, and the emperor decided to give this die to the coin cabinet in Berlin, so the dice came to Berlin. So this, these are the dice, uh, which are in a special box. And we have also um, so-named Abschläge of these coins, and also we have uh, forgeries of it. And the same is in the Staatliche Münzsammlung Munich. They have um, a suite of um, bronze, uh, objects of this Becker dice, and um, and in this area there are also uh, pieces which are from genuine silver. And a third uh, big museum which is collecting um, Becker is uh, the Haus der Stadtgeschichte in Offenbach, where um, Becker had this good time. And they, they have a lot of um, Becker uh, pieces, which they also exhibit in, the, in their permanent exhibition. For example, right, a Sieglos of, the, um, of, a, um, of a Persian emperor on, on the left, a Prusias coin, and so on. So um, we have Becker in in three uh, possibilities. One possibility is in the same material like the original, like the CNG um, piece, which is, has also a fine weight. It's a tetradrachum teta from Antiochia. Then we have these uh, so-named bronze coins. It's a bronze um, tin um, uh, mixture. And then we have um, this uh, tin 
thin uh, pieces, which are also very common. This is one, one, one of these material, how you can find Becker. And then there is a, a guy, uh, Mr. Möller in Offenbach, who has collected over decades about Becker. And uh, we were lucky that we got in, in February this um, research archive he had collected and he had done a lot of archive work, um, which was not known before. And we have also some old uh, material in the coin cabinet. This um, are, uh, is a convolute which uh, was held by Julius Friedländer, who was the son of uh, Benoni Friedländer. And this seems to be from this time um, where uh, there was a relation between um, Becker and Benoni Friedländer. And the last um, area about Becker is a correspondence between Hill, the author of the book, and Kurt Reckling. And Reckling in, uh, made, uh, let Hill know that there was um, parts of the, um, of the diaries of Becker were given to Elise, of Elise Becker, of the, of the daughter, and she was married by a, um, um, a man named Lucas, and um, so, so um, Reckling uh, helped um, that, that all this material, which was um, in the family of, of uh, the successors of Becker, were sent by the diplo uh, by, uh, over the English um, uh, embassy to, to Hill, and he co could use all this material and used it for his book. But um, he never, um, he, he, he used it, he, he never worked about the diaries on himself. Then the diaries came back and uh, you can imagine um, between 1924 and uh, 2023, there were a lot of years uh, where, where happened a lot of things in Germany. Um, but um, um, this, the main parts of these diaries um, um, were going from Lucas to, to a collector named uh, Hanai. Then it went to Künker, and Künker sold it to the um, Stadtsparkasse Speyer, where, where Becker was born. And we, we were so happy to, um, to, to persuade the, um, the bank people to, to give these diaries to the coin cabinet to, uh, to bring the material um, about Becker uh, together again. And this was just in May and we, are, we have now started to um, transcribe these uh, fine diaries. Uh, because there, there are a lot of information in it uh, which was not used by Hill. For example, about the 12th of August, um, there he is talking about a, a mint master of the mint in Bern in Switzerland. And he is, uh, he is describing that it's a fine building and um, he is talking um, with this mint master of this modern mint of, of Bern uh, about coinage, making coins. And this is, for me, this is a very um, important information because it shows that he was active in visiting modern means to look um, 
to the methods uh, in making coins and um, he he seemed to have been a, a person who was able to talk with the people and to bring um, information together. Uh, I have given the uh, the writing in the kind he used it. It's not a German grammar like we, we would use it today, but it's uh, very clear and very understandable. So then we are coming to the dice. The dice were more or less lying in the coin cabinet since 1911. And um, the first thing we had done this year with some support was to, um, to make some restoration on it very slowly. They were in a good condition, but there, there was also something to do. Then uh, we made pictures of these dice and started to bring them in the interactive catalog. And we show always two, um, two sides of every die. And you can see, for, for example, the die on the left side, um, that these dice were really used intensively. Yeah. Until now, we have um, over 100 objects published, and uh, it's uh, and and we put it in a reference. You could also you could uh, if if you look to the references in the interactive catalog to Hill, you can see all material which belongs to one Hill number together. Not only the dice, but also the other products. The, the, uh, falsifications and the so named Abschläge. So, this is one, uh, one example a coin, a Statea from Elis, Hill number 64. This is the Understempel, uh, the Unterstempel, um, which belongs to this uh, copper piece and the and this is the, uh, the, the um, Oberstempel, which was flexible, and Becker were using the same technique like the, the ancient um, uh, coin, coin makers were using with a free, with a free um, die. And um, our Julius Friedländer, who, uh, who was the founding director of the coin cabinet and one of my favorite numismatists, um, he talked about his uh, meeting uh, for, for Becker. Um, Julius Friedländer on himself was uh, born in uh, 1813. So he was a 16-year-old uh, boy, and his father Benoni said to him, uh, you, you have to be with him because it was known that he was a, a forger. And um, he, he uh, talks about a story um, that he was uh, looking uh, through the uh, collection of Benoni Friedländer. And he, he was happy that he found in these collections uh, coins from Heraclea and from Elis. And, and he, he said it should be uh, good copies when they um, were, uh, were in such a good collection like the Benoni Friedländer collection. And, and the next day, he uh, sent a bronze um, pieces of these two coins to show that it were his coins. Yeah? And this, this um, information for 1829 is, is uh, important because we now know that these bronze pieces are made by um, Becker himself. Um, uh, he, he used it to, to show um, the quality of his work, 
to show how the dice are uh, and and he were selling um, sweets of this uh, kind of um, of of coins uh, for um, like like the one we have seen in Munich. So we have again we have this this uh, three kinds the real uh, falsification the um, uh, bronze abschlag and uh, the zinn abschlag where we think these were made between 1830 and 1911 as kind of um, this where the the dealers were also interested in this um, in, to get the sweets because um, as the coins are um, made, minted um, in, in the same matter like the ancient coins, they were not too easy to identify. Um, the, um, we, we, we could talk later on about the question, uh, what are the criteria? Um, are they imitations or are they forgeries and how to go with this? So what we are doing now is uh, collect, co collecting um, pieces of it. We are looking for the, if we have all the dies, we have in the fourth column um, pieces in the same material like the original in, in um, silver or gold or even bronze. Then we have this uh, copper bronze uh, pieces where we think now at least they started with Becker after 1824. And then we have uh, at, at least we have the tin pieces um, which were made uh, after the death of, of Becker. When we are uh, talking about coins, um, they are objects which are framed by, by, by a lot of things, by actors like the, um, like the uh, pe people who were responsible for the coinage, by, by the question of uh, material, by questions about times, the times when, when it was made, or the time where it was used, or the time when there was a reception of it, at least after, for example, when an ancient coin is found and so on, and also places, where is the material coming from, where is, uh, where, where uh, was a piece made, but how to describe uh, forgeries? This is my question, and this is a question we are talking about in the moment in the coin cabinet and in the numismatische Commission. We have some other questions about Becker. We don't know exactly how he become. Uh, good um, die engraver. There are some suggestions for it, but we have not, uh, not a clear evidence. Um, we are looking for the um, pieces, uh, the original coins he could have known and could have used. The chronology of the uh, falsifications in the uh, bronze and tin um, abschläge is not totally clear no now. We are looking uh, where we can find um, um, pieces and are mainly interested in pieces in the original material. And at the end, the question of the diary, um, which was a question of in January is now answered um, because we found it in Speyer and could bring it to Berlin. 
and we have a some we have a lot of information which were made by his daughter in 1902 which is over 70 years after the death of Becker and Elise Becker was a very young girl so so the question of the authenticity uh, is always um, given and uh, we have also seen that there are some information given by her which can't be true so we, we have to be uh, cautious with all this information. Here, for example, we have a piece, um, we have two, two pieces which were made uh, uh, about uh, Brusias. One is, um, one is um, on the left hand, there is an original thing. On the right thing, uh, on the right, there is uh, a Becker piece. Here it's very clear that it's, um, it's uh, far away from the original. If you look at the breast of the of the uh, type, and there are other things not understood really well. And here is the question: um, if if he has used not a genuine coin, but uh, engraving, and Daniela Williams. Um, has found such an engraving which could have been used by Becker. So he sometimes he sometimes really invented coins. He sometimes used um, used uh, engravings, which was not so difficult because when we are in the beginning of the uh, 19th century, there is not much literature about ancient coins. But in the most times, he tried to use um, ancient coins, and these really very good in it. So, um, if I have time, um, th there are other stories about Becker. I want to tell you such a, a story in Gotha. Um, there's said that Becker is gone to the Gotha coin cabinet and he, he was uh, coming under a false flag. He has said his name is Schaefer and he, he uh, should have exchanged uh, his forgeries against uh, real coins. He also sh uh, uh, sh should have done um, um, casts of Roman Aurei, which he exchanged in uh, another visit in 1812. This is um, this seems to be a very clever story. It's all this. Uh, we we um, are uh, um, afraid of of this kind of behavior. I guess who is coming and tries to exchange pieces. This is some of the worst cases which could happen for for coin cabinets. And for for this, we use a, we, we we have to use this video uh, watching. Um, and um, this seems to be a, a very criminal story. But um, when I look further on it, the first information I have, which is clear, is from 1912. So again, more than, um, more than, than 70 years after the death of uh, Becker. And as long as we don't have genuine information, it could be also, it's, it's not the, the information we have, it, uh, we, we have on other places on Becker. So, so um, we have to make a question mark uh, about this behavior. 
But um, here, this this are uh, this sto story which is also uh, written in 1872, just 40 years after it. Yeah, but uh, it's not it's not so clear. Which seems to be um, more clear is um, that. Um, uh, that Domenico Destini um, gave a advice that uh, there was a coin dealer named Donop, and he was selling a lot of Becker coins as genuine coins, and uh, Gotha has bought coins by Donop, and if you look to the list, um, they have um, bought in 1825 and 1826, they are exactly pieces who could be Becker, and they decided um, to um, they decided to give back um, all acquisitions from Donut. Um, so, so this this story, this kind of story seems to be better, but also, also there we have to look, uh, take a closer look to it. When we, when we thinking about uh, forgeries, there are, uh, what is the interest of the um, Queen's Cabinet Berlin in it? Yeah, I think we, uh, we, we should be interested in forgeries because there are um, cultural historic uh, monuments and, um, and uh, we think they are, um, we should collect them when they have some quality. And, um, and this was already the policy of the coin cabinet in the 19th century. So we have a, a forgery collection, which is um, separated, and um, and it's also interesting to see, which is clear and easy to use, that uh, the uh, falsifications are ordered in the same way, like the original collection. So, so a Becker forgery, which is uh, about eighteen. 1800 to 1830 is not in the 19th century, but it's under Thrace Ainos, for example. And, and this, this seems to be the uh, order. Um, every, everybody is, is uh, um, looking for, for his uh, forgeries. Yeah. Just um, if we, if we have a special forger like Caprara or like um, like Zeelander or, or Becker, um, sometimes uh, we have uh, closed convolutes. Um, they are separated. And um, what we are thinking now about is how to um, make a good um, publication of the forgeries. We want to use our uh, our uh, interactive catalog, but we need some new criteria, which we are discussing now. Yeah, um, we will. I will. I will say two sentences about this, and. Um, I, 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 I'm strong um, um, arguing that we, when we make thinking about such a kind of a portal about forgeries, we should um, we should clear say what we show there, and and my suggestion would be not to include the currency. Um, not to be over complex. Um, this this could be both um, both criteria, which which could be complicated. 
So you see the discussion is is very uh, is is, is, is uh, strong in the moment. For example, we will need two uh, fields: one field for the dating of the original and one field for the dating of the forgery. When was the forgery first seen, for example? And so on the same, we look at the material of the forgery, we look at the material of the original, we look at the weight, the, the, the um, norm weight of the original, we look at the weight of the forgery, and so on. So, so we are thinking about a new um, part for, for this for this database in the moment if you click to forgery you get this extra uh, area where you can make a description of this uh, forgery too and all this um, is is included in um, in in a new project which has started in the uh, beginning of the year, which is named National Forschungsdaten Infrastructure, where we are talking about uh, fuzziness and uh, um, unclearness, yeah? how to deal with things like forgeries, um, which is really an interesting topic uh, for us. So, why collecting forgeries? I would like to ask you. But I think it's it's uh, time. I give I give a few ideas. We should collect it as a cultural phenomenon, the other side of numismatics. We have to collect them as a kind of bricolage. It, it's it's a kind of reuse of of the coins, and it has also to do something with moral knowledge. Um, and third, which, which is really also often, um, we often get uh, forgeries by coin dealers. Uh, they don't want to throw them away or melt it down, which happened in the past very often. Um, on the other hand, the forgeries are too dangerous to, to let it in a market circulation. Then, uh, if, Fourth reason is a training of expertise. A lot of numismatics are very proud um, in their uh, ability to, to um, detect forgeries, also interesting phenomenon. And um, and my my one of my main interests is uh, that it's an interesting group for questions of a qualified. Uh, digitization it is so thank you very much bernard thank you that that was that was really fascinating um raises a whole lot of questions um you know certainly about definitions uh, in terms of you know forgeries versus imitations and things of that sort um one, one thing i do want to mention um the ans uh you know has some becker of um, forgeries or replicas but um what we do have actually are a lot of dyes and um, some other replicas that were or forgeries that were uh, created by a fellow named peter rosa um, mm -hmm. in the 1960s and so forth and he stylized himself actually as a modern day becker and in fact he had a company called becker reproductions incorporated and um, he was reasonably successful at creating these things in the 60s to the point that it might have been his replicas or forgeries or whatever you want to say that led to the creation of the Hobby Protection Act here in the U.S., um, which tried to um, contain uh, that, that sort of reproduction um, or, or at least uh, these unmarked reproductions or forgeries or you know what have you so and it, it really does open a lot of questions you know about intentions on the part of the people producing these things but then also um you know for institutions like yours and ours uh, in, in terms of collecting these and of course we here at the society have our black trays as they're called 
you know, with uh, the various forgeries that have been donated or acquired over the years that we feel also are important to have um, here for various reasons as well. So that that said, I'm happy to open the floor to any questions that anybody might have. Question, um, are Becker's dyes made of iron? Yes. Normal, it's so, so named Stahl, which was gehärtet in German. I, I don't know. And this was a, the interesting thing. I, I, I showed this, um, these tools uh, to a modern uh, engraver of a mint, and uh, which also knows the historical uh, things. And he says, yes, this, this is exactly the material they would have used in the mint. So, so for me, Becker could have, I hope, I, I hope, I still hope to find some, some, some uh, information that he was perhaps trained in uh, Munich. At least he was an, um, an uh, we name it Schwäbischer Tüftler. Also he came from the same region where we have also Mercedes Benz and so, so, so he was a, uh, a, 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 a person who seemed to have been very interested in the technique. And we can see that they have, um, that he, he also worked very hard about ancient coins. And uh, he's, he's also danger because he, um, the most forgers are um, bringing their own style in it. You can see it how they make the ears or the eyes or, or mm. so. And he he tried, he was not totally successful for it, for it, but he really tried to make it as near in the it's the ancient uh, as possible. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh yes, Peter, may I ask? Yeah, a sure, question? go ahead, Daniel. Uh, one question that was just raised was whether the dyes are made of iron, and maybe the language barrier prevented uh, uh, Dr. Weiser from uh, giving the, the detailed answer that he planned to give. And in German, it would be Eisen oder Stahl. Da, um, uh, it's gehärteter. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's... Hard, hardened. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's 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 normal. They they say it's not normaler industriestahl. It's the same material, but but it's um uh, uh, don't don't ask me too hard for for it. I, I have I I have make this really very clear again. Um, the yeah, other so my the, my own question is: there are copper. Uh, uh, copies or copper issues of some of, from some of these dyes that are fairly large diameter, which would be very, very difficult to strike by hand. And my question is, how were those copies made? Are they very old or are they modern, made from the dyes using presses? Um, the, 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 um, when he used the the um, <clears throat> when he as a, the, the, uh, when, when you are talking about the original material gold and silver, it's more um, weak than bronze. But the bronze um, um, replicas are also mixed with um, with tin or, or something yeah. like this. They, they are also not too hard to make. So, so he found also his own way uh, not, not to destroy the dye. But, but you can also see from the so named Bart uh, of, of the dye that, that, uh, that, that it was used hard. And, and also I, I had learned that this part where he is um, putting on has to be um, weak as a, this harten of the die is just at, at the place where, where, where uh, on, on the other hand. So there is some, some place 
uh, uh, it's it's uh, there, there is a reduction if you if you put the uh, this this to declare in English with without good technological uh, knowledge is is very hard for me but um, it's 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 really something we have to think about in ancient times too yeah and, and yeah we have, we we have yeah sorry any other questions. All right, well, Bernard, just want to thank you again. This was really fascinating, gave me a lot to think about and uh, a lot more to explore now on uh, on websites. So it uh, really um, just a, a fascinating um, topic. So uh, hope you enjoy your evening. I know that it's getting a little late where you are in Germany at the moment. Um, and we're just now finishing our lunch. So thank you again and uh, look forward to talking to you soon.